Chapter 7, Flying Lessons. Thanks to a new hallway that appears when we leave class, we make it to the stables in no time. You guys here for a ride? Asks the stable boy who's raking hay. I'll tell you what, I told the girl that just left. The woods are off limits to students and pegasi. The last thing we need is to lose another pegasus to a giant. Pegasi are their favorite snack. Ew. Should I suit up two beauties for you? The boy heads to the stalls. I can hear the pegasi munching on hay and neighing. I've never been this close to them before, other than the time I snuck into the stables in the village to steal a gold harness some foolish stable boy left hanging on a wall. You've got an hour left till the ro Royal Ladies and Waiting Club comes for their afternoon fly over the princess's castle. Double eel. I read about this school club. Their sole purpose is to dote on the princesses. No, thank you. Yes, we'd like a ride, I say, getting excited. He looks at me skeptically. You're new here. You've ridden before, right? Of course, I lie. I mean, how hard can it be? The boy heads off to grab me some gear. Gilly, I think I've changed my mind about the flying. Maxine sounds jittery. Her good eye stares at the stalls. I was trying to impress you by asking, but to be honest, when I get in the air, I feel dizzy. It's hard to fly with just one good eye. Her bad one spins in the socket. Poor girl. It's okay, I say, trying not to sound disappointed. I can't just ditch her. Can I? We can do something else. Maxine twirls her green gem necklace. No, you go. You can tell me about your flight at dinner. I could sit at your table. I mean, if you have room? She asks, hopefully. I smile. Of course there's room. I'll see you tonight. Maxine heads off, leaving me alone to explore the gleaming white and gold stables. Photos of students in the Pegasus Flying Club at championship races line the walls near the entrance, along with various ribbons and trophies in a shiny silver case. Beyond me are the stalls and gear, which are much nicer than at the Dwarf Squad stables. I've um, seen those a few times when I've been hauled in. Those stables have a roof, but the Pegasus stables don't. When I look up, I can see a Pegasi flying high above, never veering far from sight. If you don't have a roof, how do you keep the Pegasi from flying away, I ask the stable boy. I ask as the stable boy comes back with two helmets and saddles. Magic, he says, looking at me like this should be obvious. The roof closes at night, but during the day, we like these beauties to have their freedom when they're not needed for lessons. He hands me a helmet. This should fit. Hey, where's your friend? She bailed, I say. Stable boy sighs. I already told Mighty and Macho you were taking them. I laugh like they understand you. He doesn't look amused. Of course they do. Pegasi can't talk, but they can understand human thoughts. You should know that if you've ridden before. He takes the helmet from me suspiciously, and I start to protest. I'll go up with her. I turn around. Jax is leaning on the open stable doors. What are you doing here, I ask him. Jax takes the helmet from the boy and hands it back to me. I ran into Maxine, and she said you were here. He grins, he grins mischievously. So, you're an expert Pegasus flyer, huh? I jut out my chin. Is that so hard to believe? Yes, stable boy and Jax stay at the same time. I'll take Mighty, and she can take Macho, Jax yells and tells the boy. She'll be fine with me. The stable boy nods and heads to the stalls. Jax motions for me to join them, but suddenly my feet don't want to comply. Flying sounded like a good idea till I was actually about to do it. I don't know how to hold the reins or what to say to a Pegasus to give directions. What if I fall off? I'll wind up as flat as a gingerbread man. Jax takes my arm. Relax. You can't imagine how easy this is. And the rush of being in the sky and seeing the freedom outside those walls can't be beat. Stable boy opens a large stall and I hear neighs. Mighty and macho, they're ready for you. These boys are twins, he tells me. I peek my head in its side and inhale sharply. The pegasi are majestic and huge. Their white coats practically glow, they're so bright, and their wings are nearly double the size of their bodies, even if they are currently folded down at their sides. The pegasi neigh softly as we approach. The stable boy pets the bridge of their noses. Hop on, they'll take you up and around the grounds. I watch Jack stick his foot in the foothold and easily pull himself up. I walk over to Macho. Hey, boy, I say softly. Think you can help me out? I'm not that good at this. The Pegasus blinks his bright blue eyes and nudges me as if to say, no problem. I do like Jax does and am amazed when I put, I'm able to pull myself right up. Awesome. Keep an eye on the time, the stable boy tells us, pointing it to the clock on the Pegasus's harness. Don't leave the ground since you aren't with an instructor, or you'll get detention. And don't go into the hollow woods, he says sharply. Got it? Got it, we say, and then without warning, the Pegasi's wings begin to expand and are rising slowly out of the stables and into the sky. 
My stomach feels like it might fall out as the stable below gets further and further away. The wind begins to blow my hair away from my face and I hold on to the reins tightly as the pegasus begins to flap its wings faster and takes me high above the grounds. I'm flying. I start to laugh out of both fear and excitement. I've never been on a pegasus before. In the village, they were always for the rich or the royals, and yet here at FTRS, flying is a regular privilege. I have to admit, it's a pretty nice student perk to have. Just hang on, I'll tell them where to go, Jack says as his pegasus flaps next to mine. I look down and see we're over the school now. Below, I can make out students on the lawns fencing or playing dodgeball or just lounging on the grass. I'm afraid to turn my head, but I do, ever so slightly. And I can just make out the village of Enchantasia in the distance. I'd give anything to fly over my boot right now and talk to my siblings, but I don't want to extend my stay at FTRS any longer than I have to. In the opposite direction, the hollow woods loom darkly. Jax pulls alongside me, looking completely at ease. I'm still fighting the urge to close my eyes. Pretty cool, huh? He says. You do this often? I clutch Macho's reins tighter. Often enough. Jax uses only one hand to hold the reins. The other, he pets Mighty's head. So, where do you want to go? He gets a mischievous, mischievous glint in his eyes. I know. We should have brought water balloons to drop on Jocelyn. Maxine told you about what happened in class? We're flying over the castle now, and I can't help staring at the beautiful turrets and the stone statues that sit atop each peak. I believe they're gargoyles. Sensing my curiosity, Macho brings me closer. We fly by two ugly gray ones with nasty faces, and I can't believe how long their claws are. Macho bucks slightly, and I hold on tighter. It's okay, boy. They're just statues. I say, knowing he can understand me. He begins to pull away. I glance back at the creepy gargoyles one last time, and... Huh. That's funny. I could have sworn the gargoyles' heads were turned the other way. But that's impossible. Jax, those gargoyles aren't real, are they? I ask as Macho catches up to him. Jax laughs. He's been reading too many fairy tales, cobbler. It must have been my imagination. Then my eyes spot something lying on the flat roof. My boots! I, w I will Macho to head back to the roof, and Jax follows. Harlow zapped them off my feet during class and said I'd only find them when I could fly. You've got good eyes, Jax says, landing on the roof first and picking up the boots. I dismount from Macho and change my shoes, lacing up my boots quickly. Ah... That's so much better. I stick the uniform ones in the satchel on Macho's side. So where do you want to fly to next, Jax asks. Any chance you want to see the woods? I thought we weren't allowed near them. We're not, technically, but we can fly close enough, Jax says casually. Might be your only chance to see a giant up close. I don't say anything. Unless you're too scared to go, I wouldn't blame you. My roommate, Ollie, says when he was playing rugby out in the fields the other day, he saw smoke coming from the woods. He shrugs. I touch Macho. I don't want him to get eaten. He neighs softly. Then maybe we should avoid that area. Not that I'm scared. Jax gives me a look. Liar. I can tell you're lying because when you do, your nose scrunches up like a little rat. I'm not scared, I insist, and jump on Macho again. I just don't need to just don't need to see the need to get detention. It's not like we're going to see anything wicked going on, on in a flyby over the woods anyway. Macho startles me by taking off at top speed. Slow down, I say, as clouds blur by and the wind feels as cold as snow. Slow down! Macho ignores me and keeps racing. I can hear Jax behind us yelling. But between the wind and the low cloud cover, I can't see or hear him. What am I going to do? My heart is racing. Visions of falling off pop into my mind. I hold on as he climbs higher above the clouds, where it's so bright that I have to squint. Just when I think Macho has lost his mind, he dives, and I actually scream at the speed we're going. When he slows down, I realize we're high above the same dark green treetops. We're at the edge of the hollow woods. Thank you for stopping, but why would you bring me somewhere you could get eaten? I wait for my heartbeat to slow down. If you wanted to race, you could have just said so, Jack scolds me when he finally catches up. You could have been killed. You need to talk to my Pegasus, I say. I did. He wouldn't listen. Pegasus, I always listen, Jack says as if he doesn't believe me. Well, mine didn't, and hey, is that Headmistress Flora? I point to a tiny figure in a robe that's walking quickly to the edge of the supposedly dangerous and spooky woods. The black and white speckled hair and prim clothes definitely remind me of the woman I met yesterday. What would she be doing out here? That can't be her, Jax frowns. She never leaves her office. Oh, it's her, all right, I say as she looks around, but not up, and then slips in between the trees. I feel my heart speed up like it's a drum. Gotcha. 
If my headmistress is keeping secrets, I'm going to find out what they are. Maybe dirt on her is my ticket to early freedom.